Hi there, a uh, little bit of chat, a little bit of shopping this week, um, general stuff first, I've been spending a lot of time playing uh, pinball again on the PS4, including maxing out the Back to the Future table, so yay me, finally did it, uh, I've been embracing things that I missed out on in childhood because I was not the um, son of a billionaire, which meant the launch of DC Universe Infinite uh, led to me checking out some comic books, stuff I used to enjoy as a kid. I had some odd copies of House of Secrets and other horror comics, so I decided to dive in, reread a couple of those, and really enjoyed them. So I think if you join up at the moment, it's thirty nine ninety nine for the year, and I think that continues for a while. Um, if you join up within the first thirty days of it launching, I believe. Anyway, I caved in, did that, did Marvel Unlimited as well, got my comic book on because I, I enjoy that uh, medium, but I don't have thousands of pounds to spend on them every week or month. Um, I've got some issues here and some hardbacks and I think I've mentioned before the work of Junji Ito and um, some of the different things I've picked up. But this will allow me to dive in and go through some uh, old favourites because I would read bits and bobs and discover some new stuff. So that's the news for you. As I say, for the first 30 days, I think it was, it's $39.99. Uh, double check that when you go for it and they will continue that subscription fee. Uh, shopping. Shopping has been good this week and something was tied in with a memory that I have. I was between the age of 19 and 21, 22, I can't recall, uh, and I went to the cinema many years ago with a friend, uh, and I stayed in a place where it was a long trip to the cinema, and we were driving there, and we saw a film that blew our minds, was an immediate new favourite, uh, the special effects were fantastic, the assembled cast was superb, the lead immediately won our hearts and uh, it launched a series that uh, really wasn't that successful but is now available on a nice box set. I am of course talking about Species. Ah, Natasha Henstridge. Uh, anyway, yes, uh, Species is out in a nice box set. Let me grab the bits and bobs here. So we have uh, some really nice artwork dotted about. Pop that there just now. So you've got, obviously, Species. You've just got all four movies, Species 2, and the lesser appreciated sequels, Species 3 and Species 4. In the Species, you also have some uh, postcards tucked in there. In Species 2, I believe, a uh, folded poster in there. And the booklet for the set is tucked away in Species 3. Um, so, Species 4 has nothing, which is basically the story of Species 4. I might be kidding, I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I've seen Species 3 and 4. They are very much uh, lesser works, but these come uh, packed with some really nice extra features. And the, uh, the, the masters of discussing lesser appreciated later sequels are on the discs for 3 and 4 in this set. Uh, that's Dave Wayne and Matty Budrevich. Uh, they always provide good value, so I'm looking forward to listening to them. Species 1 has the most on it, unsurprisingly. Uh, I'm not sure if a lot of that is ported over. There was a, a decent DVD years ago, uh, but that's a good selection. 2 has a good selection. But for all, all four of these movies, there are some nice little extras on there. And if you're a fan, as I am, then it is absolutely a, a no-brainer for picking up the box set. Will I rush to rewatch the later sequels? Uh, no, I won't, but I will rewatch Species a lot. 
if only for the moment in which Forrest Whitaker walks into a room coated in blood and gore and says something bad happened here. Uh, it's a classic movie moment never to be repeated. Other than the species box set, moving on. Very different kettle of fish, Beauty and the Beast 3D. I was looking online and there was some chat about Beauty and the Beast and how it's been um, kind of tweaked over the years for the different media formats it's been released in. And funnily enough, apparently the 3D Blu-ray has the uh, the benefits of it being cleaned up without it being changed. There were some screenshots that illustrate this with the it's either the rose uh, coming into full bloom or the rose sort of dying away. And I thought, I like Beauty and the Beast. It's not my favourite by far, but um, remembering the ballroom sequence and how that was shown off at, at the time when it was uh, first released, I thought, actually, that will look really nice on 3D Blu-ray anyway. So I did. I went and got this. It was, is it second hand or new? Anyway, it was about £8. So I was pleased with that. And uh, who knows, maybe one day I shall dress up as a teapot and sing Be Our Guest. Not going to happen. Uh, once again, something very, very different, but marvellous. This cost me a lot of money because it was an import disc. But <sighs> we live in amazing times. I mean, you can get ticks on, I mean, there you go, gloopy Clint Howard face it back. This is actually a, um, a, a super duper release. Um, as you can see, I mean, ticks, ticks on 4K. I don't have 4K, uh, I think I've said that before. So if there is something released in 4K that hasn't had a Blu-ray release, I'll maybe pick it up for the Blu-ray and this comes with, uh, with both discs there. It is region free. It's a uh, vinegar syndrome, I believe. I think a lot of their releases are region free. If you haven't seen Tex, it's really good. It's kind of like a nastier, gloopier version of arachnophobia. You have uh, also uh, a baby Seth Green in there. Uh, Alfonso Ribeiro, I believe. Uh, Carlton from The Fresh Prince being a jacked up meathead who uh, you know, is among the group terrorised by ticks, Clint Howard and some other familiar faces as well. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. There are some great practical effects. It will make you itch and squirm while you're watching it. It's just highly recommended, highly recommended. I recently rewatched ticks. So a few years ago, I had a cheap DVD for a while. It is a film that I'm always recommending to people. So I may not rush to rewatch this one. I'll be honest, although I'll be interested in checking out special features, a couple of commentary tracks and our stuff on there. But um, I did, after last week's video, or the week before, um, I did watch Dreadnought. I can't recall if I mentioned that. It was really good. Yun Bio is the man. I mentioned it on the podcast. Uh, on the podcast, you would have heard us discuss the Batman. Tyler and I enjoyed that more than Dave. And for the week uh, coming up, We've got uh, The Stranger, which is an Orson Welles film picked by Craig and uh, some Mako Keiji picked by Dave because he loves uh, Mako Keiji and who doesn't? She is a wonderful, beautiful presence. So um, it's on Arrow Player as well. If I remember it's a female girl boss, it's one of the Stray Cat Rock movies. Uh, so if you're wanting to play along, it's on Arrow Video and... Uh, that's it. Covered the shopping, covered my love of Tex and Natasha Henstridge. Um, and I mean, you'll know how heartbroken I was when she ended up, you know, for a while married to Darius. Darius, which meant she would have settled for a moderate looking Scotsman. Uh, so, ah! Anyway, uh, and I've also mentioned uh, DC Universe Infinite and Marvel Unlimited because I'm diving into comic books and I think some people who listen to us may like comic booky things. So the introductory offer is available on the DC app. Uh, enjoy yourselves. I'll speak to you next week.